Labrador, one of the true wildernesses left in the world. Imagine 113,000 square miles of pristine land covered in lakes and rivers, and yet with a population of less than 30,000 people. There are more bears and moose than there are people in this magical land. For those that love catching wild Atlantic salmon on a fly, Labrador is it for numbers and size of fish. For years, I've heard about the epic runs of salmon on the big river, but had never fished it because the only lodge on the river was private. A few years ago, we learned that the lodge had changed hands and it now had a new owner who opened it to the public. Of course, I wanted my daughter, who has become addicted to catching Atlantic salmon, to accompany me and sample this world-class fishing destination. What happened over the next week in terms of fishing is honestly hard to describe with just words. Come join us as we learn about this epic river and outstanding fishery all in the wilds of Labrador. For Jenna and I, our adventure began in Goose Bay, Labrador. After spending the night at a local motel, in the morning we boarded a float plane to fly the 120 miles to Big River Lodge, which is on the banks of the river, less than five miles from the ocean. It's a comfortable and fairly fast flight that gives you an opportunity to view the wonders of supernatural Labrador. The Big River is probably one of the least known salmon and trout fisheries in Canada, winding over 40 miles from headwaters to the ocean this river is blessed with a prolific and long run of Atlantic salmon, including sea run brook trout and even Arctic char. Big River was undoubtedly one of the best kept secrets in the world of fly fishing because the only lodge on the river was private and not open to the public. This lodge has been on the Big River for over 50 years, catering to members only. However, approximately five years ago, the lodge was sold to a new owner. First thing he did, was construct a brand new five-star state-of-the-art facility that is absolutely magnificent. The second thing he did was open it to the public. Constructed of stone and beautiful wood, this building features cathedral ceilings, large windows, comfortable dining and relaxation areas. Best of all, it has large and comfortable accommodations with full bathrooms. This is a true paradise for an angler who spent the day fishing on the river, who wants to relax, have a drink by the fire, and later enjoy a fabulous meal prepared by the chef. After arriving at the lodge and getting settled in, Jen and I quickly got changed into our waders and boots. then set up our fly rods and proceeded out to fish the runs that are conveniently located right in front of the lodge. Our guide for the week is Mitch Head, who comes from Newfoundland. Mitch is an experienced guide with a quick wit, helpful disposition, and always ready to tell a good joke or a funny story. He's perfect for this week of fishing and fun. Mitch took me to the top of the run, 
Well, probably now where the water is already. Could even be in as far as here, right? And after explaining where the fish should be, he headed down river to help Jenna get set up. Let it come all the way in and let it dangle there for a second. Okay. There's a lot of times this one they'll take. I had only made less than a dozen casts swinging the fly through the current when the first salmon hit. Nice girl. Live. Whoa, he is a nice one. So he gave himself away. I was working here yeah. and he rolled right there. And oh, way up top. Up and, yeah. yeah, swung in front of him and took three casts and he came for it. Good job, Dad. Nice fish, Colin. First one on the big river. Beautiful grills. Fly popped it on his own. Beautiful fish. Get ready to let him go. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Beautiful fish. Still plenty of live, but nice job, Colin. Congrats. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It seemed Mitch had only left me a few minutes before when suddenly I had another fish on. I thought this flat water looked too good to pass by. Oh, oh yeah, right, right before it, uh, it drops yeah, out. Right, just yeah. got him right, see where the foam is right here? Yeah. So he took it on the second cast. Okay. After releasing my salmon, I looked around. It seemed everyone had a salmon on. What a hot spot this is. Suddenly, Jenna hooked into one, which as her father, certainly made my day. Get some good action here. Okay, this way? This I didn't see a jump either. I didn't see that on one. On that thing. one. No. Oh, there's, there's a bunch of fish moving in there now, I bet. I've seen another one for us. Okay. So my dad's telling me to uh, stay tight to the line, but kind of walk back, get yep, the fish sort of move back. away from the faster water there. Yep, you're doing a fine job. When he runs, just let him go. Okay. Don't try to stop him. Okay. When you feel him sort of start to tire a bit, you get him in closer now, and uh, you get his head up closer. Okay. Water, you give him a pull, you should be able to. There you go. Oh. And sort of get them up like that again. Okay, you like this. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. Beautiful. Woo. Nice. That <laughs> awesome. was awesome. Thank you so much. Good job bringing them to the net. And they're so silvery here. You get some that are a little pinker. They're beautiful. The first ripple and pools of salmon encounter coming up river from the ocean are literally right in front of the lodge. The fish caught here are bright chrome, full of vigor and fight. They're exceptionally aggressive, especially on topwater flies. From dead drifted bombers to riffle hitched wet flies, skimming along the surface, the salmon hammer them all, which makes for incredibly exciting fishing which is why bombers and also wet flies with a riffling hitch work so well. Guest Bob Lindquist from Long Island has fished for salmon in many locations. This is his first visit to Big River and he was shocked how many salmon there are and how strong the fish can be, no matter what size they are. I've been to points south of here three times. If you added up the total cost of those three trips, it's more money than the cost to come up to Labrador, and that includes the plane fare. Now, I've already caught in four days more than three times all the number of fish that I caught down there. And hookups and lost fish, I've caught more than five times as many. So in my opinion, this is a great bang for your buck kind of location. 
if you're going to invest money, I would rather come up here every other year than go to those places every year because your memories are going to be infinitely greater. I have hooked the most electric salmon with the most pizzazz that I, I never could have imagined it would be this good. I have had salmon jump 8, 10, 12 times. I've had salmon jump across the river upwards of 8 to 10 feet and just singe line off my rod. It's, it's been a remarkable experience that I hope to repeat year after year after year. At the lodge with me are three gentlemen who've come here for, at Big River Camps for 26 years in a row. How could, that alone made me say, I know I made the right choice coming up here. I joined William Perk from the state of New York, who's been coming to Big River Lodge for over 25 years and asked him for some of the reasons why he keeps coming back. Well, first of all, I think it was uh, the, uh, the untouched surroundings, the fact that I'd always wanted to try salmon fishing, and this is the first place uh, that I'd gone salmon fishing. Uh, the excitement of the fish, uh, taking out 150 yards of line and jumping into the air, uh, Salmo Solar, the jumping salmon, and I, I love it. And the other thing about Big River was that the people were very friendly, accommodating, and you waited. You didn't ride in the back of a canoe or something. Well, I can tell you that if this weren't something special, I don't think you'd take the effort to take three airplane rides and, and a float plane and land here. Because it takes a, it takes a bit of, uh, you really have to want to come. Oh, geez, I missed it. I missed the take, sorry. <laughs> One jumped at my fly. <laughs> oh. oh. Came off. Came off. That's fishing. Our guide for the week, Mitch Head, explained to me where the fish are holding and detailed how I should present my riffle hitched wet fly. So, Mitch, you've taken me to a new piece of water. Can you explain where you want me to put the fly, why the fish are here, and how you want me to present it? The fish are laying here right on the edge. You see the seam of this fast water and the slow water. Yeah, where the foam is here? Right where the foam line is. The fish are laying up there. They're sort of getting into the main current. It's not so rough progress making their way upstream, right? Mm -hmm. So for presentation, like if you put the fly, actually get it in that fast water so it sort of swings in across. Right right over them, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't take too long to hook into the fish, but of course the issue was keeping them on the hook. I shortened up like you told little, me to, Mitch. A little bit? Yeah. yeah. Did about five, six inches. What happens a lot of times when they come up, they'll fall forward a bit, right? Yeah. Nice, bright, fresh fish. Okay, I'm gonna get in position over here. Let this fish fight the rod and reel and the current. So Mitch gave me a great piece of advice. We'd seen the fish roll on my fly. He told me to shorten up a few inches, so I pulled it back about four or five inches. Cast again, nothing, cast again, boom. Fish hit. Come here, come here, come here. Come back and, oh, again. <sighs> That's the third fish today that I've lost. And fly's still here, barbless. And I was putting side pressure, he was going into the current. And sometimes what will happen is you're fighting the fish and I was doing reverses on him slow, but it'll work a little hole here. And with that barbless, popped out. But great advice there, Mitch, thank you very much. That was perfect. The wet flies Jen and I are using with great success include Black Bear Green Butt, Blue Charm, Green Highlander, and The Undertaker. My personal favorites are the Blue Charm and the Black Bear series. They seem to work everywhere in Newfoundland and Labrador. 
Because of the vast size of the watershed and the large number of lakes that feed into Big River, water levels during the summer salmon season are consistent and lend for good fishing from the second week of July right into September. Perfect for anglers looking for a summer fishing excursion. Another beautiful day has come to this wilderness paradise known as Big River in Labrador, as Jenna and I, along with the other lodge guests, enjoy another hearty breakfast and coffee. Five miles down the river, the tide has come in, and with it, a fresh run of Atlantic salmon, along with some sea-run trout. It's gonna be another epic day of fishing. We jumped into one of the gander boats and Mitch drove us across the river to another set of runs which was literally less than five minutes away. Once we got set up and started casting, then the action was insane. Everyone had a fish on. I waited to the top of the run, made a few casts, and immediately had a fish hit my fly. But then, I kept missing it. After several failed attempts, finally, I was able to connect and what a spectacular fight this salmon gave me. This was an incredible morning of fishing for everyone at the lodge. Salmon, like all migratory fish coming up rivers, will choose the easiest routes and holding water to minimize their use of energy. Seams, which are the transition between fast and slow water, are the natural highways the salmon will use for the journey up river. You can see the seam where the foam lines are, but I've also indicated these by red markers. The red lines clearly show where the fish will potentially be and why anglers need to swing their flies through these areas. The riffling hitch is a popular way of getting a wet fly to ride in the surface film, much like a topwater fly as you swing it through the current. Usually the flies are small, sizes eight to 12 and having them wake across a riffle drives the salmon absolutely crazy and they will aggressively strike. Here is how to tie the riffling hitch on a wet fly. So Mitch, back on the river, we're in a great run here. And you know, I've salmon fished a bit, but a lot about salmon fishing, obviously like all fishing is presentation. And there's, you know, the basic rule I got taught, 45 degrees to 30 degrees or 30 to 45, but that really depends upon the water speed. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yes, Colin, that's uh, right. If you've got a really fast current, generally you'll upstream in a little bit, just mm -hmm. slow the fly down. But if you've got a slow current, sometimes that angle will turn into a 90 even, on a slow current. All the way to 90, right, to get the, the speed going. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you even have to do a downstream end if it's a really slow, like the end of a run sometimes. you got to downstream end a little bit, just speed it up. You don't want that fly ripping along too fast, so you know, steady speed. Or too slow. Or too slow. Sinks below the surface. Yes. So you want it going across, and then the other thing that I got taught, um, and I, I heard you reinforce it the other day, 
is that you know when you're going across and you've got the water that looks promising, is sometimes the best thing is kind of extend your arm out a bit and hold that fly as long as possible, doing its little dance out there on the surface. Especially in faster water like this. Yeah. Like this. So it's kind of like a bomber. Uh, if I'm on slack water or even dry fly fishing for a trout, where you're trying to get the longest drift possible without drag, right? Only here we want the drag, but we want to keep it in the kill zone or, or where the fish are likely to be, right? And not want it going too fast or too slow. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can get one here. The next day we awoke to rain, something you can expect to happen in Labrador. However, we were warmed by the fire, enjoying our coffee before heading out. This morning, we went upriver to try a new run. After getting set up, it didn't take long to hook up to my first fish, the first of many that rainy day. Most anglers see a boulder or a set of rocks in a river and assume that the trout or salmon are lying behind the structure out of the current. What many do not realize is that often fish will hold in front of a boulder in a zone referred to as the hydro cushion or piddle. The current will frequently create a small area where fish can easily hold and continue to hunt for food. Wise anglers understand this and will always swing a fly, either on top or below the surface, in front of this type of structure. There's a take. Oh, nice. I think that was, I think it's a trout. Yeah. Awesome. Some very big fish will take advantage of the hydro cushion to easily hold in fast current. Why do anglers love Atlantic salmon so much? It has much to do with how they fight. They jump, pull line off your reel, and cartwheel through the air. Once an angler has hooked into one of these silver leapers, then they're usually addicted, like I am. There is more to our adventure at Big River Lodge, but I'm gonna let my daughter, Jenna, tell you all about it. To learn more about this location or other destinations, then check out our website. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you on the water. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads.